How is it going, everybody? I am Donut. This is, of course, a Black Lives Matter, all cops are bastards, and trans rights supporting channel. If you're not supporting that shit, get the fuck off this channel. I am here with my fiance, Thermite. It's me, it's Thermite. He's in the void somewhere. Uh, we are <laughs> reacting to WandaVision, the finale. I believe this episode is called the series finale. So It is. Uh, anything to say before we get into this one? I have one thing to say. If you want to get the full length for this one, it's free for everybody. It's the uh, finale. Check it out in the description. You can get the full length for free. So, yeah, you can do that. But damn. before that, nice. before that, anything you gotta say? <laughs> well, it is the series finale, so we don't have to worry about WandaVision Season 2. She goes to Europe and does the hex there. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. Like, that was something we questioned before, of, like, are any of these going to get season twos? Uh, I think the only one we have announced so far is that What If is going to get a season two, which is the most, like, well, yeah. <laughs> that one is yeah. the most, if I had to guess, I'd say What If. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I still want to guess as we go to the, through the other season s series, like, do you think any of these are going to get another season? But, yeah, WandaVision mm -hmm. seems like the most, how would you do another season of this without it being an entirely different show? Yeah, it is the perfect, like, encapsulating it all as one thing that does this one very specific, weird premise. Mm -hmm. Versus, like, I think some of the other ones that have more, I mean, it depends on what they're about, but, you know, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's such a kind of broad title, it could maybe be multiple seasons, same with, like, Hawkeye, and who knows. But this one, mm -hmm. definitively one season, this is the series finale. It's a good thing you pointed that out, I did not think about that, I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, I got nothing else to say. Let's okay. get into this. I feel like we gave our predictions last time, so let's yeah, let's get right in. First off, I feel like we talked about it a lot in the episode, but again, incredible final fight. Um, as far as like a fight fight goes it turns like you know being an interesting fight regardless of the character stuff going on or the plot line stuff mm -hmm. going on just in terms of talking about the fight itself i do think it's probably up there in like some of my favorite fights in the mcu it's hard for me to remember a lot of fights in the mcu because the mcu is like you know you do a fight lasts for like a minute uh so it's hard yeah. to like really remember a lot of them like what what are some of your favorite fights in the mcu like uh, one that i can definitely remember is uh, Captain America versus Bucky Barnes on the highway in um, Winter oh, Soldier. Yeah. That's probably one of the best fights the MCU has ever done. I mean, that's also because all, almost all that fight was practical. Mm hmm. Yeah, like, I can remember a lot of individual scenes from the Battle of New York, but I can't remember it as, like, an entire set piece. Right. I do think that was very good. I, I think that's a good one, yeah. The Battle of New York was very, very dope as well. Um, honestly, the Battle of Sokovia, I really enjoyed as well. Like, they are against huge mm -hmm. armies, so it's hard to be, you know, say that, as opposed to, like, the Avengers versus Ultron. Like, the one big Ultron body there at the end. Like, the, you know, the final mm -hmm. phase of the fight was not as interesting. But the whole Battle of Sokovia was very interesting. You know, the, mm -hmm. the fight versus Loki, not that interesting. The fight versus the Chitauri, very interesting. So it's kind of like, yeah. uh, what, what do you consider as the fight? Uh, that's like, a fair point. In terms of a one-on-one -on -one fight, Hulk versus Abomination, I fucking love. I think that's great. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Tony versus um, uh, whatever the fuck he was going by, Killian, uh, in Iron Man 3. That one was a really good fight. Oh, yeah. I, I never think about that one, but it, it is actually very good. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, when I think about it, I think about a lot of, like, moves and a lot of, like, it, you know, stages to the fight. Like, it, it changing throughout time. Really cool twists happening and stuff like that. As opposed to mm -hmm. uh, something that is just, like, uh, you don't really get to see much of the fight. They're just brawling the whole time or whatever. Like, yeah. But, yeah, anything else? Like, what, what would you... Yeah, I, you know, you're, you're bad for, <laughs> like, trying yeah. to come up with a list of some of that. But, like, yeah, I just think that this is very, very impressive as being a, a final fight for the MCU. I'm not used to them having a lot of, one, I'm not used to them having a lot of directly one-on-one -on -one fights that are very interesting at all. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I'm yeah. just impressed. Like, if I had to say one, uh, Ant-Man versus uh, Yellow Jacket from the first Iron Man movie. Yeah. Or, uh, Ant-Man movie. Yeah, the first Iron Man movie. <laughs> it's crazy. It oh, no. All the way back there. <laughs> <laughs> it was so tiny, most people didn't see him. <laughs> but yeah, that, that yeah. one was a really good one. 
I, I really appreciate this thing for like a like being you know the size of a city is not that big in terms of like MCU stakes mm -hmm. or in terms of like movie stakes, but I think it really helps. Yeah, we did see the entire city. We know the size of it, and that we have like you know the, the alternating Wanda versus uh, Agnes and like Vision versus Cataract fight in the air. Like they're two very different types of fights, and then they both have the like you know brainy twist at the end after a bunch of like beam struggles and you know big punches yeah like yeah i really appreciate having vision in there for feeling like the like superman fight you know aspect of it mm -hmm. like it's something that we really haven't gotten since fucking ultron when you know vision fought ultron <laughs> yeah but yeah we don't get but those kind of fights very often in the mcu uh, of, like, two people fighting in the air in their, like, of equal skill level. I feel like most of the time in the MCU is they'll go to fight in the air and then one person hits one person and they go flying a thousand, you know, meters. Yeah. yeah you really get the... Yeah, Superman's a good way to put it. Like, Superman or Dragon Ball Z, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I, of course, I immediately and go to Superman just because the capes, you know, create <clears throat> this immediate aesthetic, like, nostalgia to that. Yeah. It has a very ungrounded energy to it. Like, I think that's why the MCU tries to avoid it, even for characters like Thor, who 100% could have a fight like that. Mm -hmm. It is the big, like, oh, well, we don't want it to look silly, or we don't want it to look like Superman. I mean, Thor is also difficult to do with that, because I do think, like, the, if there's any superheroes that I think of have the, like, if they hit you, it's not going to be they hit you and deal damage. It's, or, like, you know what I'm saying. Like, this Vision versus mm -hmm. Cataract thing is, like, they're both equally as powerful in the air. And, like, they're also doing the thing of, like, you punch me and then I lock your hand inside of me to keep you, like, mm -hmm. on me and everything. So, like, they're just right next to each other constantly. Uh, or, you know, if you even want to, you know, say, like, Dragon Ball Z or something like JoJo, where it's, like, they're hitting them very far, but then they also fly so fast that they're catching up to them and, like, attacking again so fast that the fight is continuously in the air the whole time, and they're just, like, punching each other and stuff. Mm -hmm. But again, right. Thor is the character that I think of, of, like, he hits you with the hammer, and you go soaring so far away, and, like, <laughs> you know, Thor can then, like, catch up to you by flying and stuff like that, but the way he flies is so, uh, you know, not like a natural fly, so it's not like he can just hit you and yeah. immediately fly up to you. Same with, like, he's not facing yeah. people that are, like, I can just fly super fast through the air and blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, it, it's it's weird for him, because he's <laughs> Thor is the constant going up against people who are gigantic and hitting them and they go flying. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Thor is the one person who could do it, but I, I, it, I understand why they don't, because it's just not the way that he fights. Same with, like, the yeah, Hulk, fair. you know? The Hulk, if he punches you, you're not going to be within the vicinity of the Hulk anymore. <laughs> and, and just because the MCU does not do the thing very often of, like, the Hulk can basically fly because he jumps so far and high. Yeah. be interesting if we got more of that, but also he's so old now. <laughs> Maybe She-Hulk. <laughs> Uh, anyway, anyway, just a really uh -huh. awesome final fight. I loved all the twists that we got throughout it and everything like that. And, uh, yeah, interesting how we ended this up. Like, you know, we didn't kill off Agatha. I really thought for sure we were going to kill her off. That's just what the MCU does, baby. But no, we're sticking mm -hmm. her around. And yeah, like, we might need her again. We might be able to just come back to her. And it's the, it's the best place that they could do because it really is just, like, putting her on hold. There is nothing that she mm -hmm. can do off camera. We know that wherever we left her is exactly where she's going to be. Yeah. And it is a really strong, like, we we've, we've spent the whole series really establishing that, you know, locking someone into the state is, uh, in you know, completely horrific. And also that Wanda is, you know, on some level the villain. And so this is not your classic, like, oh, the, the good guys, you know, did this thing. And isn't that really fucked up secretly? Like, it's not secret. <laughs> she knows yeah. it's fucked up. And it is, like, it, it's interesting also because it is something that she definitely, like, again, she's giving her the role that she wanted. The role that she, mm -hmm. like, that you know, Agatha wanted for herself. So it's not, like, it is this, like, everything she's doing is awful. But also, we don't really understand how the rules of this fully work now outside of the whole thing right the hex like yeah outside yeah. the hex because like what what does that mean for like n no longer it's probably gonna be like when she sleeps she probably doesn't share the nightmares anymore because wanda's not even there mm -hmm. anymore uh and like very stuff like that like it is a little bit less bad than it was 
Uh, and I think a lot of the bad also comes... I, I think probably 90% of how fucked up this whole scenario is has to do with also the children. Like, yeah. that's so fucked up. The children just having to be in the room. And also, like, the children and the adults and everybody sharing her nightmares. Like, the, that mm. line fucking is insane. <laughs> yeah, we really got away from, you know, the e extreme eldritch horror, that extreme dread, like, in the last episode in this one. Like, we, you know, as you start to understand things, it's harder to do that. But that one really got me. <laughs> yeah, that one felt like some real fucking, uh... Uh, why can't I remember the name for the Cthulhu shit? What's the overall name for that stuff? I like the Cthulhu mythos. Uh, yes, but there's a greater name for H.P. Lovecraft stuff. Elder Horror? Yeah, Elder sure. Horror, H.P. Lovecraft. Lovecraftian Horror. Lovecraftian, yes. Like, it, it felt like that. It was just like, I don't know why. It was just such a horrific line. That line's gonna live <laughs> on in my head forever. It's so... You read it and it immediately hits me with fucking dread. Mm-hmm. Oh, so terrifying. The show is so good at horror. It's so good. It really is. I'm so glad they're able to flex it. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think is going to go on with Cataract? Because we didn't end that in this series at all. Yeah, and I'm honestly so happy. Like, in the back of my head, I was thinking that, like, Cataract would show up with Wanda, and they would, like, in, you know, this episode, do the big, like, oh, well, I, I was here all along, or I was waiting for you to come out. But I, I'm really, really happy we didn't get that. And then, because... like, where are we going to get it? Like, in the next, like, Avengers movie, is he just going to show up and be like, by the way, <laughs> don't worry about all this? I mean, who knows if we'll even get it? Because, like, Cataract is... Like, he is Vision and he's not Vision. He has all the personality, like, he has all the memories and he has the body. But that still doesn't mean that he is the Vision. He could still choose right. whatever he wants to do. Right. As they say, you know, they are both Vision and they are both not the Vision. Yeah. Like, philosophically, it's however you want to think about it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's however they choose to identify. Mm-hmm. And so, like, yeah, I, I'm very curious as to what he's going to be doing going forward. Because if you have all those memories, like, what else would you do, right? Like, even mm -hmm. if I, like, you know, just thought I was some random person and I suddenly had a bunch of memories. Like, I mean, I think that the big thing is that he had, like, one directive, kill vision. It's not like he had a life that he was mm -hmm. doing. And then it was like, oh, do I continue on with this life or do I live my old life? It is like, you know, he was just suddenly born and then he was like, go kill this person. Okay. And then there was like, oh, I'm actually this person. Here's all my memories. Then what? Then what do you do? You know? Yeah. I, I imagine you go, well, I got to follow up on this. Like, I want to figure out what the fuck is going on. Like, who am I? Let me figure out that. Mm hmm But, like, how do you do that without contacting people that the other you knew? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, Monica going up with Fury. That's a whole thing that's going to happen for the future as well. Um, I I'm, I'm curious if we're just going to start slowly building up characters that are going to be going <laughs> to, to space with Fury. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm... I'm not, like, invested in the Fury and Space stuff, but clearly they have an idea for it. Yeah. So, I'm curious to see what they'll, ha what they'll do there. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah, like, they said that, like, oh, we heard you're grounded now, or anything like that. What the fuck do they mean mm -hmm. by that? <laughs> like, that's a weird wording of what I assume they well, mean. Which I mean, is that's like... specifically how, that's specifically how Hayward said it. Like, your, your mom grounded you. R oh, okay, right, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was thinking more just coming back from the snap is what they meant. But no, they were referring to that. Ah. Uh. Like, okay. So, yeah. I guess it makes sense. But I, it's just something I'm not very excited for, as she said. Yeah, it's just like, it's something that's it's out there. Sure. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. I. On one hand, I kind of hope this isn't the end of Sword. On the other hand, I don't know what they would do with it. Like, uh, I guess what I should say is... Uh, I, once we got Sword, I was expecting them to do more space mission stuff, but, like, Hayward is gone, Monica is going, like, Monica's, like, next in the chain of command, and she's gonna skedaddle up to Fury. <laughs> so, like, I don't know if they're gonna do anything, especially since it seems like they spent all this time just, like, remodeling themselves to make drones and control the fission. <laughs> and now, yeah. And now Cataract's gone, so it's like, well, <laughs> what purpose do they serve? <laughs> Yeah, I have absolutely no idea. Like, I think I think we're done with him. I, I think it's got to be mm -hmm. we're done with him. Like, this is it. What about Raoul? What the fuck? <laughs> I, I wish we got one <laughs> explanation on just, was the 
super speed i mean it has to be right the super speed was yeah. just her like she she was able to control him and give him super but like that's such an insane power to be able to give i mean that just shows <laughs> you how fucking powerful she is but like jesus Christ. i mean i guess to be fair also wanna gave powers to two kids as well yeah but man it, that's just so nuts to think about yeah, it really you know, opens up so many possibilities for what Wanda could do in the future. Like, you know, with Monica just going through the hex multiple times getting powers, like, if Wanda gets full control over being the Scarlet Witch, can she just point at you and go, like, all right, do you want a power set? Here, I'll give you this, this, and this. Yeah, like, why would you not just give more people powers? Like, it, it, you know, people, like, especially, like, on the Avengers, like, I assume there was a lot of, like, People that just work for the Avengers. Give them powers too, might as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it really depends on, like, clearly she's going to go off and start training. Right, And yeah. so, the, uh, I, I guess an easy way to handle that would be to have it be that, like, the more she trains and understands her powers, the less, like, super crazy stuff she can do. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, once you understand that the rule exists, then you can't subvert the rule. I don't know. I mean, her whole thing is chaos magic. Chaos magic. It's going to feel real weird if she's like, oh, here's the limitations on my chaos magic. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, that That would be... I, I would have a problem if they're like, yeah, here's the limitations on my chaos magic. That would, that You can't do that. You can't say it's chaos. And they'll be like, nah, but here's the rules. Well... Well, alternatively, it could be that, like, there's things that she can do 100% of the time, and then there's stuff where it's like, if I use the chaos magic to its full degree, I can try to make it do this thing, but I can't tell you if it's going to work or if you're going to die or something. Right, yeah. And to be fair, it's going all out of whack when she doesn't understand how to do all this shit. I feel like it would be way stronger when she does understand it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, she's like, you know, I'm going to figure out how this works and that. But, like, the Scarlet Witch doesn't need spells, doesn't need any of that shit. So, does she need to learn that aspect of it? Or is she just figuring out, like, how it works? Not like, oh, I need to study spells and study all that shit. But, mm -hmm. and yeah, the the runes thing is definitely like, a, that helped during this flight. When the fuck is that going to help us in the future? <laughs> like, that's not even something that's like, oh, I better learn all this. Because, like, the runes don't seem to be a uh oh this rune does this this rune does that it just seems to be runes make it that way only the person who made the runes can cast magic and so right like that's not going to be that helpful unless we face another magic user so it's not it doesn't really seem like there's going to be a lot of research that needs to goes into that yeah i assume the vast majority of what she's going to learn is just how to more you know figure out what she is doing with her magic <laughs> like oh i guess i could do this oh i guess i could do that yeah, and I guess also the reverse of making sure that she doesn't do another Westview if she gets really upset. Right, yeah. Yeah, which is going to be difficult. <laughs> That's yeah, going to be hard to control. Again, it's chaos magic. Yeah, it's like, how do you how do you control that? Mm -hmm. It's also really interesting that, like, all the damage we did to the town was not, like, real damage. Mm -hmm. Like, that's curious. I mean, I guess Wanda could have also just fixed it all as she was undoing the thing. That could have also been the case. Yeah. It's unclear. I guess it really depends on, like... Yeah, like... When she changes something, it retains all the same properties. Like, when she has, like, the billboard, for instance. It's flicking between different, like, styles corresponding to different time periods. Mm -hmm. But it's still the same billboard. So, like, does that... How does that relate to, like, damaging the billboard? Yeah. Like... If she puts it back together, does it still have the damage? Like, yeah, like is it, it must be billboard. It, it must be that she just uh, fixed everything. Because, like, to be fair, she also built an entire house out of nothing. Like, not everything yeah. is made out of something else. She is also able to just make stuff out of nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the vast majority of what she did was just changing something into something else. Because that's much easier than I assume making a whole new thing. <laughs> Yeah. But, like, yeah, like, for sure her house is just, like, a whole new creation. Well, I guess, like, anything that she made, like, 100% made would have, like, disappeared after the hex was gone. Yeah. So, yeah. Either way, the damage, not important. <laughs> not an important thing at all. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really glad that we got her mindset, like, when, uh, like, the people of Westview, like, were freed from their, uh, like, 
from the like mind tweaking and they were begging and like pleading with her and her response was this very conflicted like no you're not sad don't worry about it i can fix this yeah like i'm really glad that we didn't do the last acts uh like and now she has a better outlook on everything and she mm. can fix everything and it's all fine like she is still very 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 hurt and broken and like she cannot make great decisions yeah like she's still try she's still trying to make it work for herself mm -hmm. yeah i just i love that like it's it's so much easier to accept a bitter broken flawed ending when the character is also bitter broken flawed and you can't like they don't understand how they can fix this and so you also have to accept like yeah i'm not sure how they how they can fix this like it's fundamentally very different from like a billionaire blowing up some stuff and then going well i don't know how this can be fixed this truly is a mystery <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah very different Actually, I guess on that point, like, uh, you know, I've always had the problem, like, why doesn't Tony just give everybody Iron Man suits? Like, even, like, the powered people, like, there's very little people in the Avengers who wouldn't be better off in an Iron Man suit. Like, Thor mm -hmm. wouldn't need an Iron Man suit. Hulk doesn't need an Iron Man suit. But, like, almost everybody else would be a thousand times better with one. And it's like, what's the reason for not giving them one? And, like... The real reason is just, like, Tony is never going to do that because it's the only thing that makes him mm -hmm. special. And, the, the I mean, like, the fact that his best friend had to steal a fucking suit and he still hasn't gotten a good one. And it's just, like, you could tell Tony hates that. <laughs> you could tell it's, like, yeah, like he would, I'm the one in the suit. <laughs> yeah, like, he would much rather have, like, thousands of autonomous Iron Man drones that are being controlled in, by an AI than give one to a person who can make their own decisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but whereas, like, this is, like, I, I do think this makes a little more sense, like, why Wanda wouldn't just give powers to every one of the Avengers, even if they already have powers, or already have, <laughs> you know, something else, like, why not just make them more powerful? But it's, like, also, you're giving them an ability that you don't really know how the fuck this thing works, like, there's there's no, like, rules on this, this could just completely hey, go haywire and kill them, honestly. So, like, there's way more, like, a, you know, justification for why Wanda wouldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, also, Monica's powers, super cool. You know, we got to see more of how they work. The fact mm -hmm. that she can, like, slow down momentum of bullets and everything. This is awesome. Yeah. The fact that we had the kid learn how to catch bullets only to kill him in the same episode. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Do you think that the twins will ever come back in any sense? I don't know. I don't know. I really wish they would. I, I hope they will, but it's so hard to say that in something like the MCU. Because <laughs> the MCU is so unpredictable with what they... Like, so much of what they do is, like, I know that they're, you know, they, they do so much of, like, we're going to put this in and maybe we'll do something with it in the future. But they never have a yeah. plan of what to do. So that's why I always am like, I, I don't know. Like, I know that the possibility exists, but it's really down the line do they think, like, oh, this would be a good time to do something like that again. But yeah... yeah. It's, it's the same unpredictability as, like, comics, where you can hear someone on a podcast go, like, hey, like, I, I've actually had this happen before, where two people on podcasts are talking about a weird comics thing, and then I learn, like, oh, that guy went on to be a writer, and then he did the thing they were talking about on the podcast. <laughs> I see. Yeah, like... Yeah, I you just hit it. It's, it's, it's hard to guess. It's hard to say, is this going to come? Because I can't see a way that it's going to come back. But I also know that, like, <laughs> the fact that they did it so heavily makes me feel like that's going to be a thing later. But it could also just be, when are we ever going to do this thing? We might as well do it now. Mm -hmm. Like, there's also, there's so, like, comics don't have that, but the MCU has that in abundance of, when are we ever going to do this thing? So let's do it now. And then because they did it so early, <laughs> we never get it later on. Yeah. That is that is the absolute state of, like, especially phases one and two. Mm -hmm. Where it is the big, like, we're, we're just going to throw this out, or we're just going to do this reference. And then everyone's like, or like, you know, start of phase three, Iron Man three, they threw away AIM for one thing. It's like, oh my god, that was AIM! Yeah, I still can't believe, because, like, yeah, <laughs> AIM is, like, such a, it's unbelievable to me that AIM is not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just so crazy. It's so nuts. It's such a huge thing. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, even something like fucking Hydra was like, there's Hydra, and now there's not. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so fast. So, I don't know. This could just be another, we don't know when else we're going to do these kids, so we just did them right now. But, man. Yeah. They're so, like, I mean, 
Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, even I know about Wiccan. It's, it's, I imagine it's pretty popular in the comics. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, I was honestly very blessed in a sense to have never read the arc that this, like, that WandaVision is just very much based on. I realized in episode two, like in episode one, when I did my little spoiler section, mm -hmm. or whenever I did my first spoiler section, I listed out a bunch of things where I was like, this might be this, this might be this. And then the very next one, I was like, oh, wait, no, no, no. I've heard about this, but I've never read it. <laughs> never mind. I know exactly what this is. This is like a full run of the comics and everything. Okay. I, I would have guessed but, that this was like wholly original. Like, as far as I know, the like the time period stuff, like the, the stuff that really makes it WandaVision is original. Okay. But, like, specifically, like, Wanda and Vision, like, having, you know, like, going off to a community and just making a family for themselves and having kids, like, that was all a, a run. Fair. I mean, yeah, I feel like that's very common of a thing that you would do. Like, it's just so <laughs> obvious of, like, a thing you would do with these characters. Yeah, like, this is a very unique adaptation of anything that I know is adapted. <laughs> that's good to hear. Yeah, or like, you know, same with Monica. Like, wholly different, but still, I think, a really good character in her own right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, the, the fucking, I can't get over the scene where all the military is like, all right, we're going to attack Wanda, and then Wanda's like, all right, boys, you handle the military, I'm going to leave. <laughs> and then all the military is just goes, I guess we're just going to kill these kids instead. And then they, they have stopped, and Hayward's like, I guess I'm going to kill these kids instead. <laughs> so adamant about child murder. <laughs> Aw, Yeah. Also, Paul Bettany did an amazing job at acting as uh, the, the oh. cataract. And also, they did an amazing yeah. job with his design. Like, especially on the eyebrows. The eyebrows are, like, <laughs> just slightly different in a way that makes it so completely different. Yeah, God, I I love that his design is not just, we repainted Vision. Mm-hmm. Like, there's enough going on there to make it distinct and different. And, like, there's enough going on there that, like, I, I don't know, like... How do I put this? It's possible that he might, like, get a paint job at some point and look more like the original uh, Vision, but he also might just look like this going forward forever. Yeah, he could. And, like, I think something that helps, like, you know, Vision even, even like, oh, sorry, the, the normal, like, red and silver Vision and everything like that, because it is red and silver and it looks a little bit more like skin. Like, it is, I, I think it's supposed to, like, feel like skin and everything, right? Like, yeah. uh, it is synthetic skin. Uh, and so everything <laughs> sort of, like, feels more like a human face. Whereas the other one, one, because it is, you know, way more angular. But two, like, because of the color, you can see every little detail more clearly. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, the shading is so much more obvious rather than the red is so dark that it's hard to see shading on it very clearly. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, it just creates this, like, way more, like, damn, I could just see, like, all the little tiny detail in his face. Like, every little bit. Yeah. Very I, incredible work. This is a small detail, but, like, going off of that, I really do like the mystery around the vision. Like, specifically the fact that, like, they tried putting him back together, but they were never able to quite, you know, like, uh, more, like, not even just powering them up. I mean, like, just... As a being, they were not able to, like, make him look the way he was before. And then with Cataract, like, he's all white. Mm -hmm. I also appreciate, like, it, on Red Vision, you don't see the light bounce off of him in the way that skin does very often. And oh, yeah. That is just because it's so dark. Like, it's not even because it's, like, not the same properties as skin. But just because it's so dark, the light doesn't bounce off it as much. Whereas Vision being very bright has light bounce off of him like he's sweaty. But, like, that sweatiness is also, like, a a as looking at close-up shots and that, like, stuff that looks sweaty is just, like, uh, uh, like circuits in him that are lighting up. Mm. But they're so fucking tiny. A and the CGI is honestly so fucking good on that face that it makes it look mm -hmm. like, you know, it's, like, the light-hitting skin that is very pale and glisteny. Yeah. That is incredible. Insane. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously. Amazing props to the CGI artists in WandaVision. Seriously. Mm hmm. Like, yeah, we always give the show props, but really, fuck the show. The, the, the actual art is behind <laughs> it, we should give the props to. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, all the visual effects in WandaVision are just oh, so good. 
Like, it is that perfect balance of, like, whether or not it looks photorealistic. Like, they put the, the quality where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. And I rarely ever, like, look at it and think, like, this looks weird or this looks bad. Even when it's very noticeable, usually I'm more blown away with just, like, what is happening, which is what they're yeah. trying to do. I exactly. I mean, yeah, it's something that I love so much in other shit. Like, that's why I, I honestly like rewatching early 2000s movies a lot, because that's that era of, like, we are unabashed by our CGI, and we're going to do whatever the fuck we want. And that's <laughs> oh, the yeah. shit that I love to see. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think we... it was, like, An Anaconda, I think it was, was a movie that, like, every... I, I might be getting that wrong. A big snake movie. <laughs> uh, that, sure. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody, when I, like when I was like growing up I think it came out in like early 2000s or I might be completely wrong either way I just remember so many people being like you know oh even for a B movie we would never watch that it's just all CGI that's not the kind of B movie we like and then I at one point watched it and I was like damn I fucking love this movie it's so much CG they're so unabashed about this giant fucking snake it's so good <laughs> and like yeah I, I I still that whenever I think of CGI I think of that big ass snake movie with the CGI. I don't know if it's Anaconda or a different one, but my mind always goes to like, yeah, I, I have always liked blatant bad CGI, because it's you know that's what I want to watch. It's what I want to see. I want to see the thing. I don't want you to go, oh no, I can't show you because it looks bad. <laughs> I've got an imagination. Let me use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got some of the same charm as like when you have like a claymation uh like monster that's next to a live action human being mm -hmm. where you look at it and it's like well obviously this is not a real monster and if you say that anyone would say no shit it's made out of clay it's claymation it's cool in its own rights but a lot of people have a much harder time saying that about cg yeah yeah i, I don't understand that like the idea of like Practical, I, I love practical effects for the, I see it and I go, oh shit, that's a practical effect. How the fuck did they do that? I get that that will always have a higher thing than CGI where you go, I know how they did that. Hmm. Computers. <laughs> like, you know, it just doesn't have yeah. that same level of like magic, like wonderment, like, holy shit, how was that even possible to do? Um, but in terms of like suspension of disbelief, I don't think that CGI versus practical effects has any difference to me whatsoever. If I'm looking at a giant CGI monster that is so clearly CGI, I still have to spin my disbelief in the same way that I'm watching Kamen Rider and seeing a dude in a giant foam costume, <laughs> and that's practical. And it's like, yeah, but there's the same level of, like, not believable in any way, and my brain mm -hmm. has to go, like, but imagine what this looks like, you know, if it was realistic. And, like, that's mm -hmm. creepy. That's scary. And, like, I think the harder thing with CGI is, like, when CGI has really bad movement, that's when it's hard to even, like, imagine, or it's just, like, I can't imagine how right. this is scary. But I feel like most CGI doesn't have that problem. It's usually just, like, oh, this just looks stupid. But it's, like, eh, so does a lot of practical stuff. It's just impressive yeah. because it's practical, but you have to admit it still looks stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, before we fully, fully, fully get away from the vision, yeah. I also just wanted to, like, praise this episode for also, like, you know, getting into that eldritch feeling for the vision in a very different way than Wanda. Mm -hmm. Like, that is something they think of as being a hallmark of the character and something that they did actually really well in Age of Ultron. Like, I, I never really gave the movie credit for that until uh, your watch of it. So. Yeah. But, like, in the comics, he still has that question of, like, you know, he is the mind patterns of wonder man inside of the body of the original human torch the original human torch also having this you know weird question of like what like why is he on fire like that's not a part for anyone who doesn't know that's not a part of him being an android he is just also on fire he also has this like control over fire and the vision theoretically should have that because it's the same body but he never has and most likely never will hmm. and there's this big existential question of like well is he just a clone of wonder man then but he's clearly not and his like everything about him is so different yeah. is he just the human torch but with you know a, a different mind controlling him like is it mind control or like body snatching or something no because he's also not like the human torch in any way whatsoever like <sighs> what is this being and that is like what they got to with him saying like i used to be a disembodied voice i used to be a lifeless body i now i'm this now I'll be something else. Mm -hmm. 
Oh god, I do. I yeah, I, I love that. The fact that that is such a like continuous thing, you know, still in the comics, and like you know how strong we we focus on it here. Because like yeah, I mean, the fact that like it is like the original Human Torch's body from that. That's how the entire Marvel universe starts at all with an android that is questioning, you know, what makes me human, what makes me who I am, you know, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Like that is the where we we started everything. So it's nice to always come back to that. Yeah. I'm actually surprised we didn't get, like, any Wonder Man references in this as much as I can, uh, as much as I saw. I didn't see any. <laughs> did you? Yeah, neither did I. Yeah, that's very surprising, honestly. Like, maybe we missed a big one. But uh, if anybody knows Wait. that there was a Wonder Man reference, please let us know. Because, yeah, I'm very surprised there wasn't. Mm-hmm. Also, man, I fucking love the scene of Wanda uh, going invisible. <laughs> just her pose and everything <laughs> so good i i oh. like i was laughing so much when it happened because it was so cool but i wasn't able to articulate in the moment how much i loved that but i hope it was so mm-hmm. apparent on my face it felt so <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah i, I just I mean, also I... love any character that can go invisible invisible is probably one of my favorite fucking powers ever it's really cool it, it, there's something just so badass about being in front of somebody and just snapping your fingers and you go invisible and it's just like now what bitch and it's just so <laughs> fucking and nothing will be so cool I love it and like what does that I mean going re- forward that, that's, that's just such a huge power upgrade let alone everything else being able to turn invisible is so <laughs> fucking broken I love it and we're go- I mean, yeah. we're, we're not even that far. We're years away from it, but still, in terms of, like the MCU and stuff, like we're we're gonna have Visible Woman come in at some point. But now Wanda can already do that. Yeah, and she I, I she basically question- everything the Visible Woman can do because you can turn invisible and make barriers. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, what were you gonna say? Uh, just that like the the question to me is is that a power? Like I, I imagine like she will definitely be able to do that, but. Like, was that her using magic on herself to make herself invisible? Or was that using the hex in order to, like... Like, I guess I'm just... One question is, like, can she do that outside of the hex? I would assume so. I don't think it has anything to do with the hex. Hmm. Right? Like, that was even before the whole, like, uh... You know, she put up the runes and everything like that. So it wouldn't have anything to do with that. Right. Yeah, she doesn't really do anything else to her body. So I guess that is, yeah, just the thing she can do now. Mm-hmm. And I think that'll make, like, you know, what she, you know, the, the like, moving extremely quickly and sneaking up on people that she used to do. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm so glad we, like, that she did it in the same way to Agnes. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's such a, like, the, it the... makes so much more sense now. I mean, it, it's the classic, like, I mean, she was just using her powers before. But, like, before, mm-hmm. it, uh, I never really thought of it. Like, yeah, how is she moving so fucking fast? <laughs> she is not the one with super speed. Yeah. Like, she is fundamentally a horror monster that is now, like, getting a grip on, like, what she can and can't do. And that is scary and also exciting. hmm now, how do you feel about the fact that we did not get a Winds of Destiny change? <laughs> oh, we'll live with it. I, I I definitely feel like we're opening the door to more potential references and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm glad she has, like, a, a uniform. I mean, like, it's weird to say I'm glad she has, you know, the outfit now and everything. Because even then, it's still slightly different. And she basically had this outfit, like, back in uh, when she first joined the Avengers. Mm-hmm. She's kind of like wearing a little bit different now, but like she basically had this before. Uh, not really. Like before, <laughs> they they really liked just putting her in a hoodie. Yeah. At, at the end of Age of Ultron, was it the Age of Ultron? I think it was the end of. You know where they're all getting ready to train yeah. and everything, and they all have their new uniforms. Uh, it was even like I what she, she was wearing in like uh, Civil War, I think. But I could be wrong.
Yeah, it was basically this, but without the, like, uh, like, with sleeves. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it now. You're right. It's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always she's had something hmm. similar to this for a while. But, like, this is way closer. <laughs> and, you know, now she has the headdress and everything, which is the most important part of it. But, um... Yeah. Like, this is way closer to being, like, you know, a superhero outfit. Whereas before, it was way more of a, like, maybe she just likes wearing corsets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I I hope that at some point we do get a Wednesday Destiny change. I just I want more stuff like that. Like I want more of the characters saying what they you know, what their comic catchphrases and not having to do it in a way where it is like uh, you know, I like, I would I would be way more mad. Uh, uh, let me put it this way. I'm glad they didn't say it over having it be something like Agatha says in like a jokey way, like as like a half reference sort of thing. Right. It's I like, yeah, that's the typical prefer... MCU move. Yeah, I would always prefer the character to actually say the thing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so maybe we'll get that in the future. If not, it's, it's interesting. It's, like, it's not really something that she does at all in this universe. It's not how her powers mm-hmm. work at all. So I think that's also why you wouldn't do it. It's just like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like, it, it makes more sense what she can do going forward. Like, if it is chaos magic in the sense of, like, I'm going to change probability. Whereas, like, even what she does here is more just changing reality. Which is, like, it's slightly different. Like, she is, like, point at thing and then fundamentally change what it is. As opposed to point at thing and then, by, like, pure bad luck, it falls over. We did kind of do it with a bomb, though, so we might do that again moving forward. Of like, once she's like, well, I've learned to control it, and this spell is when's her destiny change. <laughs> I should also uh, probably tell you, that is mostly just the thing from uh, United They Stand, like the cartoon. <laughs> okay, that's not even, like, a her main no, comic No, it's not thing. a comic thing. What is it in the comics, then? Does she just not say anything? Uh, yeah, she doesn't really have a catchphrase I can think of in the comics. Yeah, I get because yeah, where I am at with her in the comics right now is if she moves her fingers in any way whatsoever, she immediately calls something bad to happen. <laughs> oh god damn! It's so like uh, brutal, or not, not brutal. It's just like so like every time it's accidental. <laughs> She's barely ever done it <laughs> on uh. purpose. <laughs> she just gets so mad and points at somebody and then fucking jacks them. <laughs> Oh no! But that's Silver Age Scarlet Witch, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what else? I, I love it again. Going into the like, uh, you know, doing the whole like, mind thing on Agatha, giving her the nightmare, mm. and then having it be changed on her, and then her changing it back again. <laughs> Yeah, like, I I really like their fight for demonstrating the difference between power and, like, skill. Mm -hmm. Like, Agatha is constantly doing the small things that are very effective because she knows it'll emotionally affect her. Or because, like, she knows how to, you know, get the most out of a small action. Whereas Wanda's fighting with, you know, like, a giant sledgehammer, essentially. Like, she can do anything, but she can't, she doesn't have a great variety in what she can do. Yeah. Yeah, technique ultimately means nothing in the face of overwhelming power. Mm-hmm. Which, I, I always love a series that can do that. Because, like, I, I feel like it's very, you know, fun to do a series that is like, oh, we're going up against this unbelievably powerful threat. How are we possibly going to take it on? But it's also really nice to have a main character that is just so unbelievably OP that no matter <laughs> how, how much somebody tries to strategize or fuck against them, like, at the end of the day, no amount of strategy, no amount of technique is going to be able to overcome just, you know, unbelievable, overwhelming power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, we, we've talked about it before, but the fact that, like, this town feels so, like, you know, they're not putting a lot of effort into not making the town, or making the town not look like a, a movie set or a TV set or whatever. Because that is what mm-hmm. it is supposed to look like. So, you know, they, they do a good job of, like, uh,. You know, even though, like, everybody's cleared out. Like, so much stuff like the whole town has been cleared out because Wanda just told everybody to leave and everything like that. And it feels the most mm-hmm. like this is so clearly a town set because no- nobody is here. Uh, 
and again they make it work so well like I, I, yeah. constantly during this fight it it looked like a fucking like cwdc show fight like yeah i, I don't know why i've seen so much <laughs> of dc shows just of like full battle <laughs> sequences of just people being like this is the fucking battle of the season and complaining about it and posting the whole battle which looks so <laughs> it always looks like a fucking common rider fight which is so funny oh uh, yeah and that, that's what this felt like like i mean this is not gonna come around everybody this is way more high budget than that mm-hmm. <laughs> but the, the town itself felt like the most like this just feels like a fucking cw show and i i love that because that is exactly what they're going for yeah it, they really use every part of the metatextual buffalo <laughs> like there's so many things I've seen that have been a big, like, oh, this also works because it's a TV show. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they just do an incredible job of making, you know, even the stuff where it's like, oh, we can skimp on this because it is a TV show, so it's supposed to look like that. And that makes me appreciate mm-hmm. it more because it's like, that is where you should be saving on stuff, like, you know, where it makes sense. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, yeah, just uh, overall an absolutely incredible season. Thank you so much for this. Ah, oh, I, I'm so excited to see what happens next. I hope that also, like, just the team behind Wandavision. I hope they get more work, mm-hmm. whoever they are. Because yeah, everyone gave it their all. Oh no! <laughs> oh, we didn't watch it all. We didn't oh, watch no. it all. There's more. There's still more. Ah. Oh. oh my god. There's all an right. after after cut kind of scene. <laughs> Let's get back in. Let's go again. The reaction's not over yet, baby. <laughs> uh, just go to uh forty five thirty two. Okay. <laughs> Can't believe that. Okay, I'm there. Three, two, one, play. Oh, this is Alkali Lake. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> is this the Hulk place? Did she just make another house? It's not a great dragging shot. Oh no. Hmm. Oh, did she take the dark holds? She must have. But also, God damn. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> oh yeah. So we are set of some big stuff. Okay. The kids are still. I'm still gonna have that discussion first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the kids are gonna be around. <laughs> Also, oh. she created like a like a I don't want to say like a clone of herself, but like a you know a, a out of body experience sort of thing. Yeah, like she's just doing shit around the house as she's also studying magic at the same time. Holy shit! It reminds me like it feels like a much more next level version of uh, in Doctor Strange when Stephen is like you know not allowed to go to the library and he's like sticking his hands through the portal just to like you know steal stuff or like yeah. he's studying while he's asleep. Was he studying while he was asleep? I don't remember that aspect of it, but... Uh, uh, there was a whole sequence where, like, he was in his astral form, and, like, his body was on, like, uh, on oh, the right. bed sleeping. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's unclear how that works, because it was like, are you... When you leave your body, <laughs> aren't you leaving your body? Like, your body's not doing anything. It's like getting rest. <laughs> and maybe it is, I don't know. <laughs> we barely... We still barely understand sleep as an entire scientific community, so... Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but but yeah, this is like a step beyond that. That is just I'm going to make a, a version of myself to have some re relaxing time. I'm gonna have a different version of me make tea, not for me but for itself while I study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like she had up symbols and everything like that. Were those runes or were they something else? And... Yeah, they didn't look like like uh, Doctor Strange circles or anything to me. They did look more like runes. Like they were just like text floating up there. Yeah. But also, where the fuck are her kids trapped? And also, how does that work? Because. <laughs> Man, chaos magic is whack. <laughs> oh, I mean, she did say family is forever. Yeah. Like. But what does I mean, that mean? <laughs> I... Imagine meaning that as a like, don't worry, we'll be together in my heart, and then it is a like weird curse thing, like she's trapped in another dimension or something. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility. It's chaos magic. It can do anything. Like, yeah. What if it is just another dimension? 